Was it wrong to consider inflation transitory? I mean, these price spikes seem like they're gonna be with us for a while. We have to address the fact that we gotta deal with the fact that folks are pay paying for gas, paying for groceries, and are, 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 are need solutions to it. So mm -hmm. let's talk about that. Short-term solution includes what we need to do around the supply chain. Right? We're dealing with it in terms of the long term, and that's about what we need to do to pass Build Back Better. It strengthens our economy. What do you think your biggest failure has been at this point? <laughs> to not get out of D.C. more. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, and I actually mean that sincerely. Inflation is at its highest level in 39 years, almost 40 years since inflation has been where it is today. And somebody pointed out that uh, back in 1982, E.T. was in the theater the last time inflation was this high. But it's not a transitory thing. The Federal Reserve has now removed that description from their lexicon in talking about inflation. This is a, something that is impacting people's budgets on a daily basis, whether it's food, whether it's gasoline, whether it's rent, utilities, everything is being impacted right now by this run-up in inflation. And even if you were getting a pay raise, in many cases it's not keeping up with the cost of inflation. So many people in this country are getting what is a de facto, an actual pay cut as a result of this uh, rapid increase in, in run-up in prices. And then coupled with that piece of news on inflation was also the report from the Congressional Budget Office that uh, pointed out that if the programs the Democrats are proposing here in their reckless tax and spending spree were continued, and every expectation is they would be, that the actual cost of their proposal isn't $1.7 trillion, it's actually $4.9 trillion, almost $5 trillion uh, expansion in growth in government in the Democrats' reckless tax and spending spree. Uh, and what it further pointed out was that the revenue that they expect to raise from the tax increases that they already have in the bill will come dramatically short of covering that. In fact, it would leave a $3 trillion difference $3 trillion, which would be added to the federal debt in this country. This is a massive expansion and growth of government financed with big tax increases and huge run-ups in, in the federal debt. I can't think of anything that worse that we could be doing right now with the economy where it is than uh, adding uh, trillions of dollars to the debt, increasing taxes, which could hurt our economy and cost us jobs and further add to, with all this spending, the inflationary problems that the country is already experiencing. Joe Biden started the year as president by giving a speech saying America is back, and we have been backpedaling ever since. With these new inflation numbers, we're on our backs in terms of the economy. After the disaster of Afghanistan, we know our back is against the wall in international relations. And now we have a president with his so-called Build Back Better bill, which I believe will break the backs of American hardworking families. So the Biden administration took two punches. It was a one-two punch this past Friday, one with the inflation numbers, and everyone is feeling those. The uh, people are changing because of inflation, the way they drive, the way they shop, the way they eat, and Joe Biden is turning into the Grinch that stole Christmas. Everyone is feeling the pain. Wages cannot keep up. And the people who are suffering the most are people living on a fixed income, our seniors, people struggling to get by. And if they pass this reckless tax and spending bill, inflation will get worse. The second punch was that of the full cost of the bill. Once you get rid of all the accounting gimmicks and allow these programs to go forward for a full 10 years, the cost is astronomical. $4.9 trillion and adding $3 trillion to the debt. When I talk to people at home in Wyoming, they are most bothered by what they're paying to fill up with gas and when they go to the grocery store. But those aren't the only things they don't like about the bill. They, they don't like the content of the legislation with regard to illegal immigrants, amnesty for six and a half million illegal immigrants, direct paychecks from the government for people who are here in this country illegally. They don't like the fact that there'll be more IRS agents hired, an entire army of IR agents specifically focused on auditing American taxpayers in an effort to try to get more taxpayer dollars and squeeze that out of taxpayers. And they don't like all of the taxes and penalties on oil, gas, and coal, which are going to make it even more expensive 
to drive or to heat your homes. Those are all things that are really, really problematic in this bill, and American people, when they know all these things about the bill, are overwhelmingly opposed to this legislation. Might leave some to think that you guys don't want any IRS enforcement. What do you say? Well, Senator Thune, a member of the Finance Committee, may have a better answer than I, but I think the last thing the American people need is an army of IRS agents crawling all over everything. We actually have in this country, I believe, a pretty high uh, record of tax compliance, particularly compared to many other countries. But, John, do you want to elaborate on that? Yeah, I guess the only thing I would add is that um, there, there are several issues related to this. One is that the Democrats think that they're going to raise a whole lot more revenue by doing this. They have these – they were talking in $700 billion to a trillion dollars at one point. I think CBO realistically has given them net-net about $120 billion uh, of what it would actually realize. But to get that, you're literally invading and intruding on the privacy of – tens of millions of Americans. I mean, what they're talking about is the transactions, their bank accounts on a daily basis, uh, all those transactions being subject to um, inspection, if you will, by the IRS. And doubling the IRS's budget to 80 billion by $80 billion, and, uh, or I should, to $80 billion, and adding thousands and thousands of new IRS agents is not something that the American people uh, are ready to accept. Now, should the law be enforced? Absolutely. And should people pay the taxes that they owe? Absolutely. And are there some things that we can do to, uh, to increase that level of compliance? Yes. But not to include the, the in, incredible uh, increase that they're talking about, both in terms of budget and additional agents and invasion of privacy of the American people. If you look at it right now, there's so many families in our country, they're always struggling. They struggle to make ends meet. And this year, they've seen their gas prices go up. They've seen their food prices go up. They've seen their rent go up. So what he's doing is, for families that are struggling to make ends meet, he's made it way worse. We saw the highest inflation numbers uh, with 39 years. And it's, it's impacting people like what my mom lived through. She had to make a choice. She had enough money for gas, or did she have mon mon enough money to feed five kids? And that's what's going on all across our country. And then we see that uh, in this reckless spending bill, they're going to cut charity care or for our hospitals, our safety net hospitals in red states like Florida. I mean, think about what the Democrats are doing. They're going to cut health care to the poorest families in this country intentionally. How could they do that? Then in their bill, they want, they want to uh, reduce your opportunities for child care and significantly increase the cost of your child care. So I wish the Democrats would slow down and start thinking about how are they impacting families around this country? If you're on a fixed income, I don't know how you're making ends meet when you see this significant inflation that's going on. Inflation is at a nearly 40-year high, and we have seen it rise in rate the fastest in a decade. Uh, this is really hard on our Iowa families and families all across the United States. And folks, pushing forward with this reckless tax and spend bill, it is not going to make things better. I just hope the Democrats understand that they realize the impact to our families and how badly this will end next year if they continue down this path.